how's it going? Happy, happy, happy Monday, Monday, March 2nd, 2015. Hopefully you can see me. Hopefully my head isn't like cut off or anything crazy. Uh, I am filming from my pantry because you know, since we're doing the nursery thing, I've been trying to figure out different places to film and then a good enough place to put the camera and the pantry shelves are wonderful for that because they're aligned at just the right height. Um, but anyway, it is, let me check the time, 7.30. Hence the scarf on my head of this lovely robe. I'm actually finishing up dinner, some chicken, some macaroni and cheese, and some string beans. But I wanted to get on here and give you an update. And when you see this robe, you just know that I am relaxing and I really need a new one I need to look up where I got this robe from because I absolutely love it so I can have another color so it looks a little bit different when I'm recording for you um but anyway so two things have happened since the last time that I spoke to you one I took my first clomid pill and two I got to go to the appointment with my doctor where I asked my million questions and I want to share with you the questions that I asked and what her answer so in regards like. to the clomid I'm keeping track of any side effects or anything that I feel so that at the end of the five days I can give a really good concrete video on what my thoughts were and how I felt about it and what side effects of anything I had so that's why I'm not going to talk about it right now but I am going to share with you the question that I asked the RE just because I wanted to make sure I had everything I just put them in my phone all right so the first thing that i asked was if i can change my cycle day 10 monitoring because remember i told you that they wanted to do my cycle day 10 monitoring on sunday coming up and i wanted to get it pushed to monday instead of sunday because i just prefer going to the ari's office that i'm used to and i'm used to the people and i like my nurse and all sorts of things so she said yes it's fine she said they do prefer that it is on cycle day 10 but if i want to come on cycle day 11 it's fine so i was like okay perfect uh then i asked if she thinks that i'm going to need to take progesterone this cycle alongside the back-to-back -back iuis because i'm currently taking it every cycle but i wanted to see what it was that she was going to say or what she thought and she said that she's going to let me know if i need to take it or not and they're just going to go based off of the different levels that they find when they do my blood work so that was good um i wanted to know about the overdrill and the clomid in reference to me because she's explained it before but i just wanted to find out the whole point again because again and some of you kind of want to know as well I ovulate on my own, my cycles are normal, and so usually they give clomid to help people ovulate if they don't ovulate, and the overdose is usually a trigger shot to help some people ovulate as well. So what she's saying with the clomid is that she's hoping that I would produce two eggs um, for ovulation, pretty much, just to give it a higher chance. So she's hoping that the clomid helps with the quality of the egg, and she's hoping that it's going to get me to produce two good eggs versus one egg so that's what she said about that and then the overdrill she said it really is just a thing so that they know and they can pinpoint exactly because this cycle i don't have to take opks because that was a question that i went because asked she's well. just going to be checking and monitoring and they're going to know before time but of course you know i've been teaching forever so i am going to be taking my opks i'll be using the handy dandy clear blue fertility monitor you saw me use last month i'm taking my opks uh, just because I just I just have to know. Uh, then I wanted to know what would be the worst case scenario in terms of the IUI being canceled or anything like that. She says as long as I don't produce too many eggs, then it'll be fine, or too many follicles. Because uh, she said, you know, we can't have you having quadruplets and stuff. So as long as that's fine, then that's good. And that's another reason why she did start me off with injectables or anything like that because she says she needs to see how much eggs I'm going to produce on my own after the clomid and she doesn't want to risk me producing way too many. Then I asked her how many days does she want us to abstain before the IUI because of course we're doing the back-to-back -back IUIs, but along with the back-to-back -back IUIs, I definitely intend to be baby dancing around those days. I want to make sure that we still give it all that we got even in the cycle where we're going to do the back-to-back -back IUIs. Um, so she told me two to seven days. I was like two to seven days? Seven days seemed like a lot. 
<laughs> seven days seems like a long time uh, so I was talking to my husband about it today and we were just talking about the quality and all the rest of the stuff but anyway we decided that we're gonna do between two and three days before the actual back-to-back -back IUIs and so that's just our thing and what else uh, two questions my husband had one was about the success rates I spoke to her about the success rates because uh, if you've read in different places you know there is no um, like scientific study or scientific information that leads to you having a high success rate when you get a back-to-back -back IUI versus getting a regular just one IUI um, but she says that in her case, her case, just my Ari's case, with the clients that she sees, she's personally has had a higher success rate in the IUIs that she does back to back. So that was good to know. And then my husband also wanted to know if he felt, um, if she felt like he needed to be on any type of special diet or eating anything in particular before going to get this done. Uh, and she said no, there wasn't anything in particular. Um, that in terms of his sperm count and analysis, everything was good. And let me see if there's anything else on here. Um, thing. Oh, and then I wanted to know, because I told you I was going to ask from when I went on. Oh, Jesus. I'm sorry. The oven is on. And you know when the oven's on and you got the roll of on. It's like, whew. Anyway. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So I was asking about the follicles. I wanted to know what they saw from the ultrasound from the day before because I didn't get much information and the lady was just telling me that it was a good baseline. So I already said it was a good baseline that she didn't really have a specific count. She doesn't really give a specific count even though they can see the follicles on cycle day three. She says because they're small and they're called some anti and then and the follicles or and the, and the, something with an A before the follicle word and she says they're much smaller so she doesn't want to look and really give a count until after my cycle day 11 monitoring so that's all which is good I was just happy that I had the time to sit down and speak with her about that oh and then the other thing was if you listen to my voicemail the lady was telling me that I had to come in and fill out some paperwork me and my husband and I just wanted to share with you what the paperwork got actually three was. three different forms that we have to fill out and they have to be filled out and notarized. So the first one is called the Acknowledgement of Marital Status. I have to fill, fill it out. My husband has to fill it out. Uh, and it's just something that they want you to do. It's a legal thing. I'll, really, I'll read it to you so you can understand exactly what it says. Um, it says it's the policy of blah, 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 blah which is where I go. Uh, to assist couples to conceive only when both members of the couple, either intended parents or the carrier couple, are not legally married to any third person. So prior to starting treatment, the institute requires the intended parents to state they are not currently legally married to someone else, someone other than the intended parent. Both of the intended parents, the patient and her partner, are required to sign this form prior to starting treatment. Intended parents who are in the process of getting a divorce from a third party are considered legally married to a third party until the divorce is legally finalized. Intended parents may not obtain treatment until the divorce to the third party is legally final. I was never married to anybody else and my husband was never married to anybody else. Um, so it doesn't really apply to us necessarily, but we have to fill it out just basically stating that we are not married to other people before going through fertility treatment. And I really need to ask her why this is. Not, not I'm, I'm just curious, not saying that I think that two people should get the baby together and then still be married to other people because it's probably not a good idea. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to ask her. Why in particular? Because I don't know. So maybe that's a good question for some of you. For some of you who have gone through IUI procedures or have gone to an RE, did your office require you to fill out something like this, talking about marriage and being married to other people and things? Uh, the second one is consent for ovulation induction using Clomid. And basically, because it's a long one, you don't want me to read this. Basically, it's just saying that I authorize them to do it and to assist with inducing my ovulation using Clomid. The main reason is because the risk of multiple pregnancies. Um, multiple pregnancies. Well, yeah, b basically twins or triplets or something like that. Although the risk isn't very high, I, on here it says, 
Multiple pregnancies occur approximately five to ten percent, five to ten percent of the time with these medications. So they're basically having you fill it out to say that you know prior to agreeing to take the medicine that there is a possibility that you may end up pregnant with more than one child. And then it talks about OHS and a couple of other things. And then the last one is just to give them consent to be able to do the IUI. And it talks about the risk of the procedures. And it says, I understand that the primary risk of the procedure is infection. This risk is estimated to be in less than 1% of all procedures. So that's good. That's nice and warm and comforting to hear that less than 1% of procedures end in infection. So that's good. We're going to fill them out, hand them in, and move on. But um, So that's what's happening. Up next, my appointment on second day 11, which is exactly one week from today on a Monday. I'm going to do more blood work, and I'm going to do my next ultrasound, and we're looking to see some nice size follicles. All right, ladies. Thank you so much, as always, for all your lovely comments. You guys are amazing. I try to respond to everybody. Uh, thank you so much for all of your support throughout this whole thing. And I really have my fingers and my toes crossed, and I'm literally excited. And I'm cloud nine just at the possibility of being able to try it and see what happens and things of that nature. I didn't get a chance to call my person at the Ari's office because there's a finance person at the Ari's office to see if the paperwork went through because she said that it needed to be it was going to take about five days for approval for my IUI procedure with the uh, insurance company and when that goes through would be when they would approve me being able to get the overdrill pill overdrill pill the overdrill uh, needle which they were saying that I would have to pay for at the pharmacy and I almost forgot about that so it looks like my husband is going to be giving me the trigger shot okay <laughs> and so i was like oh see baby jesus i asked my re when i was there because um, when i first spoke to her she was telling me that you know i could just have it given at the office but she's sitting now saying there's some technical stuff around giving it at the office with the nurse and something 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 so it's looking like uh he's just gonna have to give me the trigger shot so Y'all pray for me. Just start praying now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because I don't like needles when the person that has been trained is doing it. And so this is this is gonna be a fun one. Alright, ladies. I'll talk to you soon. Oh, and for all of you who did who have taken the trigger shot, you know, my Ari is telling me, oh well, it's just gonna be a little pinch. It's hardly anything. Comment below and tell me if when you gave a trigger shot to yourself. Or your husband gave you the trigger shot. Did it feel like a little pinch? Or was it really like, ooh, what's going on here? All right, ladies, talk to you soon.